We are now only 21 points behind Liverpool. Our title charge starts now. No, not really. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to some more Chelsea Challenge with me, Mr. Grand 2. And, well, two important matches today, it's fair to say. First of all, we will be playing Club Bruges in the Champions League knockout round first leg. Um, I mean, you'd expect us to win. With respect, you would expect us to win. Although, saying that, they did actually get through a group with... Atletico Madrid and Leon in it. They beat Atletico Madrid and Leon and managed to squeak through. They must have been the lowest seed in the group. They've managed to go through. So, I mean, we have to give them some form of respect. We absolutely cannot afford to be complacent, it's fair to say. So, since last time, results have been sort of to form, really. To start things off, a 4-0 win against Blackburn Rovers. Callum Hudson-Odoi getting the opener. Then Tammy Abraham got himself two. And Marco Asensio, the lesser-spotted Marco Asensio, popping up with the fourth late on. We then played Liverpool, and things were going pretty well. It was one all just after half-time. Jorginho with the equaliser, but then uh, Rhys James got himself got himself sent off on the 80th minute. A little bit of an experience from him there. And then two late goals from Hamid Salah and Paolo Dybala sealed things for the champions elect. But we bounced back immediately with a 5-1 victory against Newcastle United, one of the teams that sort of derailed our title ambitions last season, were put to the sword in brutal fashion. Tammy Abraham bagging himself a penalty, Asensio scoring again, and Christian Pulisic as well. It was an excellent performance. And interestingly, only one of these matches was played with the vertical tiki-taka formation, and you can guess which one. It's the one we lost. The other ones, every game since the Southampton game, we have played the more attacking system, and it seems to have worked. Um, a lot of goals scored, not really many conceded, only one against Newcastle using that system. So it, it's interesting, and it's what we're going to do, do today against Club Bruges. We're going to try against Arsenal as well in the second game then, because if we have a look at the league table once more, we're not super far behind Arsenal, but if we don't beat them today, certainly they beat us, then we're out of the conversation for the first two places completely. And I think it's just between us and the rest to secure this Champions League spot in third or in fourth place. Bit of transfer news then, and we did receive a bid, which is on your screen now, uh, from Manchester United for young Archie Shaw on deadline day. I don't really know on what planet they actually thought I would ever sell my best youth prospect to them. Well, I'm not going to send him to anyone, but certainly not to Manchester United. He is developing very, very nicely indeed and may well feature before the end of the season. We could even we could even put him on the bench for the Club Bruges game. We'll have to see if there's any spaces. I wasn't above selling any of our youth prospects, though, and after we rejected their bid for Archie Shaw and laughed them out of the room, Man United came back for Faustino Anurin, one of our other... This is a real-life youth player, 19 years old. He's a winger. I've used him a few times in pre-season. Very good physicals, but not really much else. His potential star rating was three and a half stars, and I think, if anything, that is quite generous. Um, he's given a 45% recommendation here. Let's have a look at what our scouts think. I mean, his determination was not good. Only, was it four, I think? Five. Not great. Doesn't, I mean, he, he's got some good attributes, but I think overall doesn't look particularly great or like he's ever going to be amazing. And, well, they, they paid us $24.5 for him. $20 million of it was up front. We've also got a 50% of next sale thing, so... If he goes for 5 million, we get 2.5 million. If he goes for 100 million to Real Madrid, if it turns out he's really good, then we'll get 50 million out of it. So I don't think there's much loss from this one. He was never really going to trouble the first team, I don't think. And to have Man United give us 24.5 million is pretty ridiculous. That's over 60 million that they've given us for two players I didn't really want. We're not going to get them today, but I am excited for our next youth intake as well. According to Neil Bath, it is a good group of players coming through uh, and uh, plenty of positions being a promising centre-back, lots of wingers as well. I think last year's youth intake was not the best. Obviously, Archie Shaw is is, a, is really, really good. But our second highest rated regions are two guys that I bought in the summer. So Liverpool game aside, we're, we're doing well. We're, we're, we're feeling confident. Marco Asensio has come into the side and finally started doing something. So we are going to go with the same team that beat Newcastle with this one. I want to go, I want to go into this game, hit them hard get a bunch of away goals, just completely seal the tie. We can play the rotated side in the second leg, hopefully having pretty much already secured our place in the next round. Apparently Man United want to sign Christian Pulisic. What, are they, they're obsessed with our players. Do they want to sign Emerson as well? That's Real Madrid and Barcelona. Man United, are just, they're just absolutely obsessed with us at the moment. 
I said the team then for this one is the same team as the one that played against Newcastle, but that's not the team that you'd necessarily expect. Kepa's going to be in goal. Emerson, Tomori and Rudiger. And Aspel Equator is going to be at the back. He has recently asked me to leave, and the only way I could get him to commit to staying was to tell him that he would be playing the next few games. So he's going to be playing. I mean, it's not a problem. He's a really good player. Really, really good player. But obviously, Rhys James is just sort of just sort of better. Um, but he's on the bench today. Uh, Jorginho, Mount and Kovacic is the midfield. N'Golo Kante has got a bit of, uh, bit of an illness. He'll be out for a few more days. And then Christian Pulisic and Marco Asensio on the wings with Tammy Abraham. You've got a hat-trick in the last game, of course, up front. So we can't afford to be complacent against Club Bruges. We've got Simon Mignolet in goal. I don't recognise any of their other players, but how, how many goals has their striker got this season? 13 goals for David Okereke. So we have to keep our wits about us, but we, we are the favourites. We're the holders of the competition, don't forget. We've got to see this as a very favourable tie. We've got to see it through and get ourselves at least into the quarterfinal. Well, first highlight, and inevitably, it is Club Bruges. I said we couldn't take them lightly. Aspel Equator cutting that one out. Pulisic punting it forward, looking for the run from Tammy Abraham. Doesn't quite get there this time, but Kovacic wins it back quickly. Is he going to go for the shot? Yes, he is. Just across the face of goal. I really would like to just seal this one in the first leg. And that's not a great start, is it? We highlighted him before the game. David Okereke. He's got 14 goals now, and I, mean, I don't have the Belgian league loaded, so I think most of those are going to be in the Champions League. Simple ball over the top. Defence falls asleep. Rudiger and Tamori not watching at all. And inevitably, Club Bruges have the lead. I said we shouldn't underestimate them, and it looks like that's exactly what we've done. And that's half-time. Nothing else in the game. We should have taken the lead. We then gave them the lead, and that's it. Rubbish performance so far. Not at all what I'd expect, especially using this system. Cesar Aspel Equator. I promised him he'd start some games. I didn't promise him he'd finish them. Rhys James is going to come on. And uh, we're going to go into the second half and hopefully do something a little bit more. We're going to go attacking and hopefully find some way through. I mean, clearly some arrogance on my part. I was expecting to win this quite comfortably. Anyway, Tammy Abraham's in. And it's not the best goalkeeping in the world from Liverpool's former number one. But we do from our second highlight of the game get ourselves an equaliser and an away goal lovely ball from Emerson Tammy's in and well Mignolet got a bit of hand to it didn't he got a little bit of glove on it but finds its way in and it's one all you have to give Club Bruges credit where it is due we've not been at the races today but they've been pretty solid they sort of nullified us quite a lot um, a winner would be would be good to seal this one and see this one out Neither winger really making much of an impression, so we'll ring on Torgan Hazard and Callum hudson Adoy. Hopefully they can make a little bit of a difference, but it doesn't look like they will. It looks like this is heading straight for a draw. We've got the away goal, of course, which is all important, um, but I mean, not not what I was expecting. Still another highlight. Can we get a winner, or is it going to be a winner for them? Okereke's in again. Kepa just about tips it past the post, but once again, the defence having a little bit of a nap Another chance from the corner, and it's going to happen. He's got another corner straight away. Bournemouth plays it in. Rudiger, at least this time, gets it clear ish. They still have the ball, and well, at least we managed to stop it on that occasion. Well, there we go. One all draw. We rescue ourselves a place in the tie, get ourselves an away goal, but only one. Not in any way good enough. Very poor performance, you have to say. Credit to Club Bruges. Um, I certainly underestimated them and so did the players we're not out of it yet though Juventus losing at home to AS Monaco that is well that's that's even worse than we did even worse than we did right I'll see you in a few days time before the crunch match against Arsenal well Arsenal interestingly losing 2-0 to Inter Milan in their Champions League knockout round match um, so they're going to be they're going to be even more wounded than we are for the league game so then Arsenal at Stamford Bridge we need to really win this one if we're going to keep any hope of getting second place live in our well we're not going to win the league are we but we want to at least try and get second place finish higher than we did last season that will be an impossibility if we don't win this one i think it's fair to say so reese james is going to come back into the team in place of the disappointing cesar aspel equator kante is also back from illness so he can come back into the team as well otherwise no changes from the team that failed to beat club bruges well, Arsenal, of course, the reigning champions, as fast as that may well be. Unai Emery still in charge. They've got Emil Smith-Rowe in the side. Bakayo Sako as well. 
um, two youngsters on the wings, similar to us, and, well, they brought Danny Caballos permanently, Bakayoko from Ice Monolos, Luca Dina as well. It, it's a pretty decent side, it's fair to say, but expect a win today. We're not, we've not been great against Arsenal. Can we get ourselves a win against them this occasion? Well, first highlight going Arsenal's way. Um, we are set up very attackingly. We, I mean, we could we could use the other system. We could switch to it if need be. But I think the higher pressing could upset them. Pressing high on Bern Leno already, going right in there, not getting a breakthrough though. And instead, it's Aubameyang through, and he's found a way through. Kepper putting it into his own net by the looks of things. Ball goes over the top from Dinia. Not the best. We get caught out. Aubameyang's through. Bit bit unfair that that was uh, an own goal. I think it might have even... Well, maybe it's because it was going wide and Kepa actually touching it put it into the net. But an unfortunate start. Need a response. It is fair to say we are in danger of dropping out of the top four um, still. I think we, you know, we're in a good position for it. But losing games against Liverpool and Arsenal, well, it, well it's obviously not going to help us in any attempt to go up, and that's not going to help us at all. Um, we're not going to go up the table. It's not critical for anyone overtaking us, but it's certainly not ideal. Arsenal really one of our bogey sides along with Manchester United, and Bellerin putting the ball across, and Aubameyang is just not being marked at all, and this system is not working against them, that is for sure. Two shots on target for Arsenal, two goals. Um, they're, I mean, they're, they're not out of the title race. They can still chase down Liverpool, um, but but we certainly, certainly are. Well, I've not changed to the other system yet, but I think I am now, as this highlight comes in. Dinia across to Sacco. Bellerin's there. Kepper at least makes a decent save this time, and we get the danger away. How are we doing in terms of possession? They are dominating possession, which rarely happens against us. We are the side that controls possession. Not today. Arsenal playing very, very well. And this could get very messy here. Corner comes in, looking for Socrates. Pulisic gets it away. Can we get ourselves a goal on the break? Tammy Abraham, vicious strike from Tammy. All about the work there from him and Pulisic. Great punt down the field from Pulisic, looking for his striking friend. And, well, the Arsenal defence, as they so often do in real life, falling asleep. Tammy going and getting the ball. Great finish from him. We're back into it. And we need to see if we can keep this going. So signs of life. Just before half time, Emerson puts the ball across. Pulisic is there. And Abraham can only just trickle it into Bernd Leno's gloves. That was a great opportunity to level things up before the break. And instead, Arsenal could get themselves a third. Bellerin shooting straight at Kepa. So half time. We're not out of it yet. Disappointing. But we have found ourselves a little bit of a lifeline back into the game. Clearly this system is not completely useless and is needed against some opponents. Tomori over the top for Abraham, can't quite find his second. Marco Asensio, not seen much from him today. Well, there's the corner in, Abraham heads it over. So coming up to an hour gone, not much of note in the second half, but we have sort of steadied the ship a little bit in terms of the Arsenal side. They're still dominating possession, but it's not by an absolute landslide. Um, Asensio, we hasn't really seen much from him. We need the, the pure pace of Callum hudson Doy. And N'Golo Kante is having a very poor game by his high standards, so we'll bring on Mateo Kovacic. Right, time rapidly running out in this one. I'd rather lose 3-1 than not try and get back into it. So we'll go attacking. Kovacic sprays it out to Emerson, who does well to keep it in, into hudson Adoy, looking for the angle of the cross, tries to find Pulisic. He doesn't find him. And, oh dear, here come Arsenal. Caballos is bundled and robbed. Pulisic somehow has got all the way back there. And lovely ball across to hudson Adoy. He does have a brilliant... Vision on him, does the American. Not on that occasion from Hudson Adoy. And Arsenal looking to come back at us once again. Very end to end stuff. Jorginho, him and Pulisic all over the pitch at the moment, covering all sorts of ground. Well, certainly an improved performance after the first 20 minutes or so, but it doesn't look like we're going to find the breakthrough. And it's going to be, I think, another disappointing defeat. Um, we're still going to be third, but Man City could overtake us if things go their way. And there we go, a disappointing defeat. Good second half performance, but not enough, unfortunately. I'm not going to make them come into training, but it was an improved performance. But unfortunately, Arsenal, on this occasion, as they always have been, in the save so far, too good for us.
Sammy, though, with another goal at least. 16 for him in the league this season. Not too bad at all. So, disappointing episode, I think it's fair to say, after recent times have been quite good. Um, yeah, not ideal. We will be playing West Ham in between this one and the next one. Of course, the next one is going to be the League Cup final against Leicester. We're also going to play Spurs in there in the FA Cup fifth round. Uh, we'll, we'll show the highlights of the Wolves game. We'll play the second leg against Club Bruges as well. Let's get it all done in that episode so we get through things a little bit quicker. And hopefully we have a little bit better fortune than we did today. But as I always say, you can't win them all. And, uh, well, we're not going to be winning the league this season. That is for sure. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well so you don't miss the next one. And I will see you next time for the League Cup Final.